Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome to the last game of Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020 semi-finals. This time Magnus Carlsen uh, gonna play Blitz game Armageddon game against Hikaru Nakamura and uh, this only game gonna decide who gonna qualify to the grand final against Daniel Dubov. Magnus Carlsen, his Blitz ranking 2887, he's gonna play as white and Hikaru Nakamura who choose to play as black uh, because he he had the choice because he got the uh, better score in the first phase of the tournament uh, and he gonna play as black his legendary ranking is 2900 however Magnus Carlsen is the world champion in, in blitz as well not only in rapid and uh, standard time control but in uh, blitz as well so a very interesting very exciting game and it's gonna be a armageddon game five minutes for magnus carlsen and he has to win as white uh, black for hikaru nakamura and he needs only a draw to win that game so without further ado uh, let's jump on the board we have d4 by magnus carlsen knight on f6 c4 e6 knight on f3 and d5 queens gambit declined knight on c3 bishop on e7 and now bishop f4 harvitz attack again and magnus carlsen just played that you know two games ago uh, and he won against uh, hikaru nakamura so uh, what hikaru gonna play against that this time uh, we have castle we have e3 knight b on d7 uh, bishop on e2 uh, d takes on c4 and now castle and here hikaru before play knight on b6 so here is the idea uh, he wants to put this knight on b6 he want to place uh, another knight on d5 uh, and that's his idea for this game but this time he goes for the main line and his main line for some reasons so uh, a6 a4 and now knight on d5 uh, as planned as before uh, with the attack on the bishop uh, and bishop on g3 we have c5 so attacking the center now bishop takes on c4 c takes on d4 e takes on d4 uh, and magnus carlsen gonna play with the isolated queen spawn in very active position so uh knight from the seven ranks go to b6 now attacking the bishop bishop retreat to b3 and here hikaru play uh, a5 as magnus could play uh, a5 and harass this this knight so this knight would be dislocated in the worst position uh would have to go back uh, and this is what hikaru wants to avoid and he said uh, in the interview that he has only four minutes uh, and he has to play very fast and solid like he cannot you know uh, think too much in all the positions so uh, we have a5 by uh, hikaru nakamura and now knight on e5 so uh, magnus carlsen starts to attack we have bishop on d7 so very similar ideas as uh, in the first game uh, we have knight on e4 now by magnus carlsen bishop on c6 and now knight takes on c6 uh, b takes on c6 and now rook c1 so going after the the pawn on c6 uh, which is definitely a weakness uh, so white have maybe slightly better position maybe equal however it's uh, much easier to play as white white have the pair of bishop and also slightly more space to play uh, and now knight on b4 defending c6 but also immobilizing the bishop now the bishop is on this diagonal it's not the best diagonal for the bishop now uh, this bishop would love to for example go to this diagonal so that would be um, very nice but it's not possible with the knight on b4 uh, we have queen on e2 by magnus carlsen and now knight from the sixth rank to d5 so these knights as you see uh, make quite a progress you know uh, working as a pair of knights uh, we have rook f on d1 by magnus carlsen now rook on e8 queen on f3 uh, rook on a7 now uh, protecting the seventh rank uh, but also it's possible to double the rooks easier uh, um, by Hikaru Nakamura uh, we have bishop on e5 now provoking f6 uh, however 
uh, Hikaru Nakamura don't really want to do it, you know, easy uh, because this bishop is watching. So when f6 is moved, is much better for white, you know, uh, than with having all this pawn structure here. So he played bishop on f8, now defending g7. Uh, so any attacks are not really uh, possible, at least not directly. Uh, and here is the position where Magnus Carlsen missed the tactic, but this is the blitz. Uh, he actually, actually feel free to pause the video and find the, the tactic, uh, which in the worst case winning a pawn, but in the, the best case uh, making a beautiful mating, uh, you know, attack. So it's very, very nice tactic. Uh, and it was shown by Pascal Charbonneau in the after game um, uh, show and uh, and it's just beautiful. So this is why I want to show you and uh, and I'm gonna enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So uh, the tactics starts with bishop on d5. This is what you have to find. And now uh, if any pawn takes, for example, c takes on d5, uh, then knight on f6. This is the clue of the tactics. So now um, if, the, if the knight is taken, then of course we're gonna have a bishop on f6 attacking the queen and then queen gonna come to g4 and checkmate on g7. So black have to uh, sacrifice the queen and lose the game. Uh, and if king on h8, this is actually very interesting because white simply can win the, the exchange. That is, of course, very good move, but can also attack the position of the king. So rook on c3 uh, and then, for example, rook on e7, uh, queen h5. The threat is, of course, checkmate. So uh, h6 and rook g3. Uh, and here, if playing anything like, you know, uh, knight on c3, let's say, to attack the bishop, then queen h6, this is the move, okay? And black doesn't have much choice, this would be beautiful checkmate. So g6 have to be played, uh, but then white can actually sacrifice the rook. So rook g6, f takes on g6, Queen takes on g6 and now it's possible to checkmate on these two squares. So the only move uh, to prevent that is rook on g7, but then queen on h6, uh, rook h7, now knight h7 with check. That's a crazy stuff, very beautiful, isn't it? Uh, bishop on g7 and now knight g5 again with check. And, and the bishop is pinned, so even cannot take the queen. So king on g8 and then finally uh, winning the queen uh, and the game. So that would be pretty beautiful. So after bishop on d5, what uh, black have to play is actually not queen on d5. This would be even worse because knight on f6 actually attack the, the, the king and the queen. So if the king is moved, the queen is lost and, and this is just a checkmate the next move. So uh, that's not the move, but knight on d5. This is the only move which Hikaru would have to find and then white wins the pawn, okay? So uh, this is what Magnus Carlsen missed in that game he had his chance uh, however he played queen on g3 so it's still very hot on the uh, on the king's position of Hikaru Nakamura uh, and now Hikaru doesn't have much choice and play f6 uh, we have bishop on d6 now uh, bishop takes on d6 knight takes on d6 uh, and rook on f8 as rook was under attack uh, knight goes back to e4 uh, and now queen on b8 asking Magnus to exchange the queens uh, as Hikaru just needs a, a draw, so exchanging the pieces is good for him, uh, but Magnus doesn't agree with that, so he play queen on f3, we have rook on e8, g3 by Magnus Carlsen, and king on h8. Uh, knight on c5 now, improving the position of the pieces, and now rook a to e7, so double the rooks on the e file, and now definitely e5 is coming. Uh, we have bishop on c4 by Magnus Carlsen, and now e5 as planned. d takes on e5, queen takes on e5, and now rook on d2. So Magnus Carlsen also want to double the rooks. We have queen on g5, attacking both of the rooks, uh, and now knight on b3, defending 
defending both of them, but also uh, putting the pressure on a5. For now it cannot be taken, but you know, it's still there uh, once the rook are, uh, you know, protecting each other. Uh, we have knight on b6, now attacking the bishop and the pawn on a4, uh, and now h4, first attacks the queen, so queen have to be moved, uh, probably queen on h6 would be better just to stay with the queen on this diagonal, but Hikaru prefers uh, queen on e5, rook on e2, now harassing the queen, so queen on c7, and now just exchanging uh, this rook, so queen on e7, and knight a5, winning the pawn. Uh, and here what Naka should play is just take the pawn uh, on a4 uh, and after knight on c6, knight on c6, queen on c6, uh, win this pawn on b2 uh, and this would be, you know, very very close to the draw. Uh, so for example after bishop on b5, uh, rook on d8, uh, rook on c2 and knight can go to d1 and the position would be, would be pretty funny. Uh, actually, here maybe queen on a7 would be quite crazy. Of course, it's it's impossible to 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 plan all of that in in the blitz game. Uh, however, the the knight is defended, and and after bishop on f3, now defending f2, it's very very complicated, rich in uh, in motifs position, and it would be very interesting. However, probably it would be a draw, but white stands slightly better as this knight, you know, uh, cannot move for now. And and uh, and also black have to be careful of the of the uh, last rank issue. So uh, very interesting. And here, if h6 is played, then a white square would be pretty weak. And with the with the bishop on the light squares, uh, white stands slightly better here. But it's still not so easy, you know, to win that, especially uh, in the blitz. Uh, however, queen on e5 is not really great because this actually gives uh, Magnus the opportunity uh, to finish the game. But the way I'm gonna show you, it's just incredible. Uh, not because, you know, it's some beautiful uh, combination or something. It's incredible because the engine sees that and most of the commentators, you know, uh, the grandmasters haven't seen that. And, and, and you will understand why. Uh, because the winning move now uh, is bishop on f7, of course rook on f8, as there are some, some issues on the last rank, there are some tactics which can be exploited by, by white, uh, and then knight on c6. Uh, and here black actually cannot take on c6 uh, because queen c6 and this knight is trapped. Uh, as you see, this bishop actually covers all the squares here uh, and the queen also helps. Uh, and here if the knight goes to c8, uh, there is of course uh, the knight gonna be lost because of the, of the uh, last rank issue. So uh, not this way. A knight on a8 is the only move, but it's also not good. So black would have to make some space for the for the king uh, and then just exchange the pieces the problem is uh, white gonna have two extra passed pawns and that's winning for white so definitely after knight on c6 uh, black would have to go for the pawn on b2 uh, and now this is crazy rook on d1 first uh, and here uh, black actually can take on a4 which is the best move in the position and it looks like black equalized the game because the material is equal however these knights are far far away from all the action so the plan for for white is for example rook on d7 uh, bring the the knight to d8 move the bishop uh, make some windmill uh, tactics here uh, queen also can come to g4 uh, if h6 is moved then exploit the the g6 square and there's a lot of ideas here a very difficult position for black and according to engine is just completely losing the evaluation is you know plus four more than plus four plus four point seven so uh, that means it's like extra pawn and extra uh, piece at least so in this case, knight on d8 is the move starting all this madness uh, and then whatever black play, like trying to bring the maybe the knights to the game, knight c5, maybe covering this d7, uh, but it doesn't help. Simply bishop on c4 with this windmill idea, uh, queen on c2, maybe uh, attacking the bishop, but it doesn't help uh, because knight f7 uh, and uh, the knight can actually defend the, uh, the bishop, so king on h8, and now rook a1 exploiting this way as the queen covers a8 okay 
So this have to be all found. So uh, what Black can do is the engine recommends knight on e4. So just give give the knight and you know and lose the game. Also knight from the from the b file goes to to a6. That is the another idea. So also of course uh, is attacked twice. So also is losing the knight. So this or another. And another idea is h6, which is also losing because rook on a7. And now you see already that some checkmates are coming. Uh, so now knight on e4. Uh, and and actually white don't even need to you know take the take the knight because knight on f7 with check. Rook f7 uh, and now uh, not even bother to take this exchange but Rook on a8. King h7, pretty crazy stuff. Now Bishop f7, uh, Queen on f5 is coming now so that's gonna be a checkmate so g6 but now h5 attacking this pawn uh, and if pawn is moved then a queen goes to f5 and wins the game so king on g7 now bishop on b3 with attack on the queen uh, so queen on c1 just deliver some checks uh, and now f5 protecting the knight so it's pretty crazy stuff so far. Now just rook on a7, king on f6, uh, rook on f7, and I just don't need to show it anymore. I think this is just mating net in the center of the board. So this is what uh, what the engine sees uh, in this moment where we're playing this with bishop on f7, rook f8, and this is so crazy stuff, this is so crazy stuff. So uh, it was definitely impossible to just spot. So Magnus played more human move, knight on b3, uh, and this actually equalized the game. Can you imagine from plus 4.4, plus 4.7, this just equalized the game. Uh, so knight on e4, now winning back the material, bishop f7, so Magnus see some of the combinations, but after rook on f8, he doesn't have um, this knight on c6 anymore. So rook on c4, now attacking two of the, of the knights, so it looks pretty good, uh, but now simply rook on f7. And here is the critical position of the game where Magnus should play rook on e4, but it's not winning move uh, because queen can retreat to b8. Keep an eye on the on the knight and also protecting e8. Okay, so there are no mating ideas. Queen f4 trying to win back the material and attacking the queen uh, also doesn't work, uh, but black have to be very careful. Rook on b7 would lose the game. That would be just losing queen e3, and in the next move, white would just you know win the game, win the queen, uh, and win the game. So uh, rook on f8 would have to play by Hikaru Nakamura, and after rook on b4, just exchange the queens, uh, and this is just a draw. And Magnus definitely cannot win that. Okay, knight on c5 can can block the pawn, uh, and and let's say rook on d4 locking down this this knight, so this knight cannot go anywhere because all the squares are are defended by the by the rook so not this way however the the knight cannot be attacked by another knight definitely and if king try to go then of course rook can just cut off the the king and uh, and and that's all that's definitely not uh, the position to win by magnus carlsen so rook e4 was the only move in the position queen e4 also was possible but uh, with the same results uh, but magnus carlsen play rook on b4 immediately taking this this knight and he calculated uh, probably because i'm not in his head but probably he calculated uh, that this knight gonna be under attack so have to be moved uh, and after knight on b2 uh, what can happen is rook on e4 and that would be actually very very beautiful because after queen on b8 queen e2 wins the material okay so that's the idea because here we have a checkmate so after rook on f8 queen b2 and with extra knight magnus carlsen would win the game so here was the idea the problem is after rook on b4 I hope you see that already because Hikaru Nakamura spotted that immediately and he played queen on e1, queen e1, forking the king and the rook. 
uh, Magnus just play uh, king on h2 automatically, we have queen on b4, queen c6, both players low on time but Hikaru was very very precise and play rook on f8. And in this position Magnus Carlsen resigned the game as he cannot harass the rook anymore as the queen protects the rook so uh, controls all the squares on these diagonals also uh, defends the, the knight and also attacks this knight so uh, there is no hope Magnus Carlsen resigned the game and Hikaru Nakamura is in the grand final so uh, let's see the scores what just happened during this match Hikaru Nakamura and Magnus Carlsen draw in the game number one uh, then Hikaru won in the in the second game and I show you the game uh, of Magnus Carlsen where he won against Hikaru in the game number three you can check the link in the in the upper right corner uh, we had the draw then and in Armageddon uh, as you see Hikaru Nakamura won so 3 to 2 and this is the uh, all the scores in the quarterfinals as you see semifinals and big final uh, coming tomorrow Hikaru Nakamura gonna play against Daniel Dubov so very very exciting as Daniel Dubov uh, shows a lot of you know uh, interesting ideas in the openings very very creative player and Hikaru Nakamura very very experienced player also uh, loves to play a happy chess uh, you know uh, unorthodox openings and that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be very very beautiful final so uh, if you don't want to miss any other videos just press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one